listeners, I'm Mrs. Bennett, and this is Mrs. Bennett's Truths, universally acknowledged. This week is all about Lizzie and Fitzwilliam, and I have some very special guests planned. Now, Lizzie was a tricky one to match, because she's extraordinarily picky and stubborn. I first encountered Fitzwilliam Darcy at the Meriton Festival, as he is a good friend to Charles Bingley. I immediately saw that he was very rich and handsome, and so had my eye on him from the beginning. With my superior intuition and sense for womanly matters, I instantly knew that he and Lizzie would end up married. Lizzie, however, refused to see it, and insisted that he was very rude and she would not dance with him. I, of course, encouraged that she put aside her prejudices and see him for who he really is. Very, very wealthy, but she would not listen. Later, Henry told me about William Collins, a family friend who is set up to inherit Henry's business once he has passed. He said that William was coming to visit, and I immediately saw an excellent opportunity. I decided that I would convince Collins to propose to Lizzie, and with Mr. Collins as a comparison, she would see how perfect Darcy was for her and how much more rich. (laughs) Now, as a special guest to help me tell this story is Mr. William Collins. Mrs. Bennet, please, you said that I would be reading to your audience from Fordyce's sermons, not recounting a silly story. Oh, come on, Collins. I tell you what, you had me, and at the end of the episode, you can read to the listeners. Oh, all right. Perfect. Now, let's start from the beginning. What were your intentions since coming to Hertfordshire? Well, my esteemed investor, Mrs. de Bourgh, has often advised me that it is the duty of a clergyman to provide an example for his town, and that I should find myself a proper bride. So, I came to Hertfordshire to look on your daughters and see if any of them were acceptable. And uh, who did you set your sights on? Well, I instantly was astounded by Jane's beauty and temperament, but upon discovering that she was spoken for, my eyes alighted upon the lovely Elizabeth, and I grew instantly attached. Ah, yes! She refused you, though, did she not, when you proposed to her? (coughs) Must we speak of this? Oh, yes, we must! What did she say to you when she refused? That I could not make her happy. Thank you, William. You may go now. I'll text you if I have room for you at the end of the podcast to read your sermon. Uh, But can I tell them how I ended up? That's enough! I did end up marrying a most reputable woman, Charlotte Lucas. She's just as respectable as Elizabeth. Anyway, a while after Lizzie turned down Collins, exactly as I planned, she was invited to stay with the Collins and meet Mrs. de Bourgh who I knew was related to a certain special someone. Now, I will call my next very special guest, Mrs. Catherine de Bourgh. <phone rings> Hello? Hello! This is Mrs. Bennet calling. Bennet, I refuse to speak to any Bennets. Good day! Oh, well, that was odd. I'll try one more time. <phone rings> what is it? Hello! I would love to ask you some questions about your... Is this the Bennet again? I will not speak with you. Not after you have polluted the shades of Pemberley and ruined my daughter's marriage. Well, never mind that. Let's hear a word from our sponsors. Hello, listeners. This week's episode is sponsored by Stamps.com. Tired of waiting in long lines at the post office? Stamps.com can save you time and energy by allowing you to print legal UK postage right from your home. Isn't that just wonderful? To get my special offer of 50% off your first stamp, go to stamps.com slash marriage. Hmm, I was hoping that de Burke could shed some light on the events that transpired while Lizzie was away, but I suppose we shall have to rely on my... Excellent intuition. I can only assume that, while she was visiting with the Collins, Lizzie saw what an amazing life Charlotte has, and how grandly Mrs. de Bourgh lives, and she had an epiphany. 
She must have realised that I had been right all along, and that she should have listened to me about how important it is to have a respectable and eligible marriage. She must have gone to Fitzwilliam, as I predicted, because he is the wealthiest man she could find. Voila! Now they are married. Even though I am not Fitzwilliam's greatest fan, he is very, very wealthy, so I approve. With that, the stories of my married daughters have concluded, and it is time for Keeping Up With Kitty! And Mary too. Dear, dear listeners, I have some absolutely shocking news. Mary, of all people, has a boyfriend! They met online through a chat forum... And they are now dating. Apparently, he's rich. Um, Mary says he owns lots and lots of Bitcoin. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds like money. Kitty is still single, unfortunately, and so I've had to move on to my next plan. I stole Kitty's phone, and I texted every boy in her contacts that she was single. I will update you with the results. And now, time for listener mail. A short message for this week from one Hanley, who writes, Hello, Mrs. Bennett. Avid listener here. I'm such a fan of the podcast. You're so funny and wise. Your advice is bringing hope to my generation. Oh, best wishes. Hanley. Oh, thank you for your kind words, Hanley. I hope you find a good husband. If you would like to contact me or ask a question or pay me a compliment, please email Mrs. Bennett Podcast at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>